From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, Roger Charlton back with another episode of Ropecast. And again today, I am without my regular colleague, Peter Tischer, and uh, in the studio with me is Roz, who told us a little about the history of Bristol. And now we want to bring things a bit more up to date and talk about what Bristol is like for people living or studying there today. Welcome back, Ross. Thank you. Um, I don't know a lot about life in Bristol, although I've taken study trips there, but I've heard that it's a great place to eat. Yes, absolutely. I think one of the characteristics of Bristol is how diverse and international it is as a city. And one of the things that really brings to Bristol is the diversity of the food yeah. that, that you find there. I think um, colloquially, Bristol is really known for its cider. Um, <laughs> but if you actually live in Bristol, um, it's not a lot more than just cider. Yeah. It's not really local food, is it at all? It's um, everything but. Indeed. Um, in fact, in the centre of Bristol, there is a road called Gloucester Road. Yeah. Um, which I think is, is is about a mile long, full of independent eateries of all different nationalities, yeah. um, from African cuisine through to um, Middle Eastern cuisine and so on. So, so they've kept out the big name, the chains? On that street, at least. I mean, one thing that's, that, that you see throughout Bristol is that it, it is full of independent traders. Right. Of course, there are the big chains there yeah. as well. But I think Bristol's very proud of being a sort of independent city and we even have our own currency the bristol pound oh, which really? you can use in some establishments you can even use it on the buses in right yeah uh, so i suppose with all of these eateries there must be a good food market or maybe several food markets as well the most famous of the food markets is st nicholas market which is right in the center of the city uh, it's at least 100 years old it's a traditional cupboard market yes. um, where you can um, purchase anything from falafel um, to smoothies to Spanish paella and so on and so forth. So truly international. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. The other thing which might also be international is music. It's a good music scene too, isn't it? It is. In fact, um, one of my friends in Bristol plays in a steel drum orchestra right um, and I myself I, I, I play in a symphony orchestra and I think even that sort of shows that that we have we, we have a real breadth of music making yeah in the city and it's it, Bristol is also known for its jazz mm -hmm. scene um, and there's an awful a, a lot of I suppose what you'd call an underground pop movement as well yeah well you mentioned the steel then that's another connection with the Caribbean mm -hmm. that you mentioned last time yes connection with slavery so that that kind of connection is ongoing, in yes. a way. Yes. And with Africa, too? I'm sure there is a connection. <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, are there any big-name bands from Bristol? I mean, things that would be known around the world? Um, I suppose the two names that really stick out are probably Porter's Head, yeah. um, the band which is named after a district of Bristol, yeah. and I suppose also Massive Attack, that's another ah, yes. big band. Um, Massive Attack, which actually famously refused to play in the Colston Hall, which we were talking about last time. Ah, yes. So um, kind of anti-slavery feeling. Absolutely, due, no, to, due to what was represented. Right, yes. What other aspects of um, modern-day Bristol do you think might be interesting for our listeners? In 2015, Bristol was the European capital of green culture. I'm not sure I've got the title absolutely right there. Mm -hmm. um, but Bristol is very keen on its green credentials. Right. Um, so one example of, of this is that cycling is extremely popular ah, in Bristol. Right. Um which is, I think, a little surprising because Bristol is notoriously hilly. It is. Um, I, I'm a keen cyclist, <laughs> but I would think twice about cycling around parts of Bristol. Really steep hills. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. But it, it's still popular with cyclists. Absolutely. Yeah. You, it's much easier to get around the city by car than by cycling. Right. Um, I mean, for me, and the obvious thing would be to cycle along the canal system because then that's all more or less on the level. But mm. clearly there are more challenging routes as well. Yes, well, thank you for those insights into modern day Bristol. I'm just, I think there's still a few things we could talk about, but let's save those for another day. Thank you very much, Roz. Thank you. Bye, listeners.
You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. Thank you.